This screencast is on a regulated monopoly, which is also known as a natural monopoly. Remember that monopolies are illegal in the United States. After the Sherman Antitrust Law, if you are um, preventing any type of competition, then the government can break you up. However, in some cases, it's actually beneficial to the consumer, and so therefore the government will allow it, but they regulate the companies that do this. And that's what we're going to look at. Um, the whole reason that a natural monopoly exists is because of economies of scale. So this is going back to the cost curves when we looked at the different um, types of long-run ATCs. And with the economies of scale, what we're saying is that the greater the quantity that's produced, your ATC is actually going down. And so this is here, obviously, the short run because you've got the marginal cost curve. And we can see here that minimum ATC is at this quantity here of 12,000. If it was perfectly competitive, minimum ATC would be way over here. And so what you have is you have an ATC curve that is very slow to drop to the minimum point. You have a marginal cost curve that that U part of it is very long. And so that's what you're going to see in these graphs is a marginal cost curve that's just like pulled out longer in length instead of it being a short and swooping type of marginal cost curve. So the reason that natural monopolies exist is because of economies of scale, where it takes a long time to get to minimum ATC. So let's take an example here of um, a graph where it's looking at a natural monopoly. You've got examples in the real world where we have like ComEd and NICOR, and these are ones where they have very high either startup costs or it could be things about the plants and where you... Um, that could be another reason as to why you have this ATC that's at its minimum way out here. So when we're looking at this here, it's still the same with demand equals average revenue equals price, and you've got your marginal revenue curve that's less than your demand curve. Our formulas here when we're looking at the profit maximizing output is still MR equals MC, and so where you see that on the graph is down here. If you're looking at the price, if it was a... Um, Non-regulated monopoly, you would have the marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You would take it up to the demand curve, and that would give you the price that they would charge at. You would see here, if we think about allocative efficiency, allocative efficiency is where price and marginal cost intersect, and you can see that's quite a big difference in quantity going on here. So we're definitely not at the socially optimal, and you're not having a lot of companies that are participating here. And so in order to be able to meet this area over here, you have the government that intervenes. When you look at the productive efficiency, the productive efficiency is over here. And so this is where it needs to be in order to get to that minimum ATC. The natural monopolies won't ever get there. And so um, it, that's not the focus here, is what they need to do to get to minimum ATC. It's what they need to do in order to try to utilize the resources as efficiently as possible. So the government has two choices, and with each choice, there's a trade-off. So not only do you, do you need to recognize what the choice is and the formula for that, but you also need to see what the trade-off is that goes with it. So one of the choices that the government has is referred to as the fair return price. And one of the things that they can tell that company is they're regulating them is that if you are going to do this, you must charge a price where your price is equal to your ATC. That's the same formula, remember, as our break-even. So what happens here is that that's like a fair price because what they're charging is what it takes in order to um, produce it. And so with that, you have an output that is over here. The trade-off is that they're not at that allocatively efficient point of that price equals marginal cost. And so they're not meeting the right mix of goods. They're not producing what society wants. And so you're not going to have enough of it. So that's the trade-off. You get it where they can cover their costs, but they're not going to have enough for society. Well, the other option that the government has is the socially optimal price. And this here is the formula for the allocatively efficient. And so with the socially optimal, they're making exactly what society needs. And so you're able to achieve that allocative efficiency. The problem is that per unit, 
the costs are higher than what they are charging. And so as a result, what the government has to do then in order for this company to exist is to subsidize the producer because they're at a loss here if they produce at this output. And so this, this is the trade-off is that the government has to subsidize. Let's be honest, they subsidize through taxing us. And so in the end, we're actually paying a higher price for it because, uh, because of that. So understand why natural monopolies exist, which is the economies of scale. Understand that they're not producing at the profit maximizing output. The government has two choices as how they're going to determine what this company is going to do. You have the fair return. The formula for that is price equals ATC. And with that one, they're not meeting the socially optimal amount. Or the government could have them produce at the socially optimal amount. But if they do, they'll incur an economic loss. And so the government has to subsidize that.